Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mo. In today's video, I'm gonna be wrapping up all the books that I read in April, and then I'll be including some of the books that I wanna read in May. I will be having timestamps available, so if you wanted to skip around the video, watch whatever you wanna watch, that'll be available to you. If it gets too hot, I will be turning on the AC. If that's a problem, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. So, let's get into it. The first book that I read in April, well, I finished Jade Legacy. I do have a vlog up on my channel. It's the Green Bone Saga reading vlog. In that video, I included Jade City spoiler free and then Jade Warren Jade Legacy. I did talk all the spoilers. Jade Legacy, I ended up giving four stars. I really didn't like the way it was executed with all the time jumps, honestly. I think the founder lead did a really good job, but I just don't really like time jumps that much, I think. And it kind of just took me out of the story multiple times. What became a small problem got so broad and expanded that it started to get like a little confusing for me. So that did make it four stars instead of like four and a half or five so the green bone saga series it is a gripping godfather-esque saga of intergenerational blood feuds vicious politics magic and kung fu that's basically what it is without getting into like the nitty-gritty of it all jade is a gem slash mineral in this world that gives you damn it gives you <laughs> like uh, a lot of physical attributes and it helps people fight yeah that's it i'm not really selling this series but it's an amazing solid series i actually gave jade city 4.75 stars i gave jade war 4.5 and then i gave jade legacy 4 so i really enjoyed it i would definitely reread it again i would recommend it they are hefty books just letting you know because i didn't know and they're all on kindle unlimited too and then next i had another video where i read books that were wrapped up so i was surprised when i opened them up and the first one in that video was blackout it is by six authors danielle clayton tiffany d jackson nick stone angie thomas ashley woodfolk and nicola yoon in short this book is about six different couples that are experiencing the same blackout in new york city it's really cool how they're all interwoven in ways you just find out further along in the plot i thought it was beautiful i liked pretty much all of the writing I thought it was nice like you could tell they all have their own voices but it all felt connected so I enjoyed that about it next in that video I read real love by Rachel Lindsay I gave that one 3.25 stars the title of the book is basically this reality TV show that's kind of like bachelorette it's called real love and we're following our main character Maya who has this plan in life to like be director of her investment firm or something like that marry her college sweetheart Ooh, it's a spider in my car is that a spider is that it better not come in here i know that much i'm not a nature girly like that like i want to be so bad but i just don't like bugs she wants to <laughs> marry her college sweetheart and basically just build this life of success that's really the premise of the story i'm not going to get into too much details because i talk about it in that video but i didn't like the main character and i feel like that does bring down my enjoyment of the book if i don't even really fuck with the main character because it's only in her voice i think she's a hater she's hateful people that make their successes their personality they're they're lacking in compassion they're lacking in personality. Like, I don't know how to explain that anymore. She was lacking. That's all. Lackluster. <laughs> That's all I got. I felt like the writing was cool. It was all right, but I felt like this was longer than I wanted to be reading. I, I was kind of done around like here. And this is 200 pages, but in total, it's 300. Yeah. Beautiful cover. Eats down. So sad, but it's out. So in that video, there was a spicy book that I already read when I opened it up. So I decided to pick a spicy book that I've been wanting to read for a while. And that was Just Say Yes by Briggs McQueen. I don't remember the main character's name. They all went to high school together and they're all like, this is years down the road. She went through this nasty breakup or whatever and she hires a moving company and one of them is the owner. Yeah, she had a crush on one of them. And then like now she's seeing them all grown up and she's like, I kind of with both of them. So she ends up with both of them. It is very steamy. I liked it for what it was. I did not rate it. It's a book that I've been wanting to read for a while and I really enjoyed it. And then lastly, for that blind date with a book, that's what it was, blind date with a book. I read Hunter Slayer by LT Shaw. That's when I gave three stars. I did get into that in the video as well. The air's on, sorry if it's too loud. I'm sorry, I did my best. So we are following Violet. She really admires the marshals. They're like this magic wielding, basically police force. Her town had basically been ravaged by some kind of monster. This is very magical. Like, there's like lichens and like, not cyclones like shit like that like it's it's mystical her town had been fucked up basically and she lost some people that she loved so she's just like oh i'm gonna become one of these people but the thing about the marshals is they don't really like try to help the small towns they don't really give a like they they respond to like the signals really late as fuck. so people really die like a lot of people die and their whole towns get squashed one comes down to her town and she helps destroy it and she gets in trouble with the marshals because they're just like you should wait for us you should wait for us but it's like everybody would have been gone like we couldn't wait there's that she becomes like this apprentice to this like Hey Mitch from Hunger Games vibe type mentor and that's it yeah three stars I've been really wanting to rewatch Avatar The Last Airbender so I read the comic books which have been on my TBR for a while and Libby had all of them like the omnibus ones which is like I guess a collection of 
different stories in one. Each of these stories has three comics in them, but it felt like it all went together. So I guess if you read it in parts, it's kind of like episodic, which it read just like the show, honestly. I really loved it because we get a lot of closure from the series. So the first one that I read was The Promise. I gave that one four stars. I'm looking at my iPad, by the way. I felt like the characters were the same as the show. I miss them so much. There, It literally starts from the show's ending, so they're all the same age. And if you watch um, Katara, no, not Katara, Korra, that show, they're grown in that series, so it's different. But this one is it picks up right from the show and i loved it i loved it i loved it basically zuko is like i don't want to become my dad so if something happens Aang, i need you to take me out so Aang's like what the fuck like, this is my friend like oh ah. you know like how ang do in in similar ang fashion that's all i can say there's yeah it was just so cute i loved it the next one i read the search oh also this is by i believe jen not jen jean luen yang or yang there's like two other people that they collaborate with i believe i ended up giving the search 4.5 stars questions were answered and you really see some more character growth between the kids yeah i loved it we get closure because if you watch the show zuko and azula's mom is mentioned but we don't really know where the f she is in this story we figure out what was going on with that and i needed that because the whole time i was watching the show i was like where the f is their mama where is their mom and then you read it and i'm like I would have never guessed that. Loved it. Obviously, I loved the artwork. It was amazing, beautiful, beautiful gowns. Then next, I read The Rift. That was 4.25. Honestly, Toph is my favorite character overall of the whole series. And she was getting on my nerves a little bit. But, like, that's who she is. She's very stubborn. But she's my girl. She's my girl. Everything ain't just about brute force. Like, sometimes think a little bit more. I want to say that because Aang is trying to make things harmonious or whatever, he's bringing all the people that were um, mixed in different territories like fire nation was in water nation they would bring them back to their territories or whatever and it just caused a rift that's all i know the next i read smoke and shadow i gave that one four stars <sighs> azula is so mad like she's so mad i love her as a character when i first watched the show i was like i don't know if i'm supposed to like her but i just i can't not stand a bad bitch. like female rage i just love a mad angry woman and for for the most part, I feel like she was validated in that in her anger. She did not get the love that she was supposed to get from her parents. So she did a lot of things for attention and this is where it led her. I then read North and South. I gave this one 3.75. I don't have a lot to say about this one. It was about more the water tribe and these people from the North were trying to help the South tribe, but they were just trying to like upgrade too much. And there was like deceit and lies and shit like that. Um, it was good. And then lastly, I read In Balance. That one I gave four stars. I really don't remember this one either in balance in balance oh this was um the spirits were coming and like the avatar is supposed to be the communication between humans and spirits so the there was like an imbalance because people were basically polluting the earth and they weren't doing like this ritual that was supposed to keep the peace between the two uh humans and spirit world so the spirit came back and was trying to f some shit up and Aang was like no calm down calm down like he does you know what the f you do so yeah that one was four stars and then next i have a video called this video ends when i read a five star book and this is gonna be a spoiler because if you haven't watched the video you wouldn't know but now you will know because you're watching this which i don't know why you wouldn't watch the videos in order in that video i read a love song for ricky wilde by tia williams i have all my thoughts in that video i don't really know how to explain this plot so i'll just tell you like some of the tropes it is soulmate love it's a romance there is it's kind of historical fiction more so in magical realism the romance is beautiful though it is gut-wrenching it's gorgeous beautiful 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 love it love it love it down this was 4.75 stars for me it didn't quite get to five stars and i can't really remember why i might have said that in that video but i think something wasn't connecting for me fully i don't know it was beautiful though i love this book i would definitely reread it i would definitely re recommend this and then next in that video i read this could be yes by kennedy ryan and it was the five star and honestly kennedy ryan this motherfucker don't miss this motherfucker don't miss this has solidified for me that Kennedy Ryan is my favorite author. I would say at the moment, but she's my favorite author. Um, this was a little bit more than a regular contemporary romance and that it dealt with a lot of different topics, some heavy, some not. It was a different pacing than Before I Let Go. This is the second book in that series. This is Soledad's story, Yasmin's best friend. Let me get into the plot right quick. We're following Soledad and she's raising her two girls and there's a rift in her marriage. There's some trouble going down. There's basically the downfall of her family and this guy plays a major part in it. And that's all I will say. I went into this pretty much blind, more like a self-discovery, self-love type women's fiction book. If you're into Spice, Spice gets to be around this point in the book. I was fine with it, honestly. This is almost 400 pages. I think it's 387. 
and there was no part that I would take out of this book. I loved it so much. I think I read it in like two days. I don't know. It was amazing. And then I read Beast by Sky Moon. I gave this one three stars. This one is an urban retelling of Beauty and the Beast. The pacing of it, the writing, like it was just submit for real. And I hate saying that. I hate saying that. We follow, what's her name? I think her name is Reagan. And Asim is the uh, male main character. She has this crazy ex that she is trying to dodge. He's like stalking her and being aggressive. And she runs into this guy that's basically his op. And they meet and they they separate whatever her dad witnesses the guy like the op in some kind of illegal activity so he's like no stop stop so he gets him, himself involved in some shit that's not his business for real so he gets kidnapped and then she's just like like in beauty and the beast she's like leave my dad alone like i'll stay leave my dad alone so that shit happens and she's basically kidnapped and confined like beauty and the beast and it's like the stockholm syndrome thing where like you're getting kidnapped and you start with the person that kidnapped you a scene was very hard like on the outside i do like reading stories like that with like the bad boys that are so fucked up because they do love a lot harder sometimes but it's also like damn we had to go through the trenches to get here um it is just so mean <laughs> like why are you being so mean and i don't know i didn't really see the connection i didn't so it was missing for me i don't feel like everyone should be together in some books i did like the found family aspect of it and yeah the actual crime like the criminal activities were actually described which a lot of books just skate over certain things i'm like i love that i love i love getting to the nitty of the gritty sometimes i'm i'm like in between whether i'm like an action person and not so i really like that in this book and then next i read the writer's block by mia monique honestly i found this all on tiktok and i love the cover better than the one that's like on goodreads actually it is a best friends to lovers book and it's sports romance i love that and the author's note said just enough plot for smut and if that's not calling my name i don't know what the f is yeah i gave this one four stars josephine is the main character she is a writer and she's trying to write romance for the first time like a spicy romance book and she needs some she needs some good old inspiration she's a virgin i believe or she's like very limited I think she's very limited in her experiences so she either has not had like mind-blowing sex or she hasn't had it at all he basically teaches her caleb is her friend he's this like famous football player he's kind of been shown in media as being a hoe so he's just like i need to clean up my, my image before i get cut like they're gonna take me off the team because like this shit ain't cool right? you, you could be a good player but like if you're a womanizer that's not gonna be good for you know sponsorships and shit like that well it could be some there's double standards for men we all know that they fake date and it was good i really liked it like the spice got into it I, I liked it that's all i got four stars i don't four stars then i read goal by alexandria house and i read them boy series by alexandria house and then this is my second like series of hers and it's just something that we don't really connect with like i don't know i feel like her books and me we're friends but we're not home girls you know like there's something there like there's a spark but there's not a full connecting like we're distanced i don't know i will say content warning of i don't want to spoil this for you but there's problems with pregnancy basically it's very dark i didn't think it was going to get to that point so we're following this main character i forgot his name i think it's malik or kareem i think it's malik i think it's malik let me just look it up child malik okay so he is a hockey player he's famous and he's fiancing with this lady that's very bougie or whatever she's annoying she's stuck up and he finds out that he has two younger siblings so he has to take them in for a little bit and it could become permanent but he's just trying to see and she's very like uptight and like we wanted kids but we don't want big ass kids they're like nine and seven or something like that so she's just like this is not what i uh, uh, this is not what i whatever so he hires a nanny and this is nuri and they already have a physical attraction to each other but as they get to know each other they feel something for each other and i believe she was a virgin too three stars and then that is the st louis sires series which is like the the hockey team so then there is holding i read next i also gave that one three stars um what was this one about it says childhood neighbors enemies best friends lovers they were married at one point then they got divorced that was complicated and it's a second chance both of these books really moved along very fast like the pacing was off for me they're short books i think 200 something pages i did like gold better which i was like i don't know if i should make holding three stars as well but i didn't completely enjoy the writing style it's something about it that just doesn't really like resonate with me it does talk about heavy topics too and like i don't know i thought these were going to be more lighter fluffier sports romance books and they weren't 
and I think that's a part of why I think they were three stars for me and then next I read spin the dawn by Elizabeth Lim I'm not gonna get too much into this because I do have a video after this coming up for my author binge I'm in the middle of that right now tailors are very revered and they can only be men and the main character Maya she wants to be a tailor so bad like she's been taught by her dad and she's the best one in her family out of her three brothers a lot of war and tragedy break up her family so she decides she wants to bring honor on her family very Milan style we just follow all of her trials and tribulations there's a competition to become the emperor's champion tailor or whatever and yeah i thought it was gonna be boring because i was like why would i want to hear about someone making dresses but it's very good i loved elizabeth Lim's writing i feel like it's very whimsical and beautiful she writes very folk telly fairy tellish i really loved it i gave spin it on four stars and then the what was that a sequel this is a duology i read unravel the dusk that one was 3.75 stars for me and i will try to explain more in that vlog that, I'm, that i told you about it's gonna be in the next video everything that i feel about the book so i'm now gonna get into what i want to read for may i'm going to be participating in my first readathon honestly readathons really intimidate me because i don't really be doing tbrs for like if you if you've been on my channel for a while i've probably done like one or two and i don't typically stick with them like it's kind of a mixed bag like sometimes i do sometimes i don't it really just depends because i'm a mood reader i am going to be participating in the asian readathon by cindy from at with cindy here on youtube they have a video up on their channel okay the theme is past lives i will link their video in in my description box for like more details i'm gonna read the prompts and then the book that i'm gonna pick and we will see if i stick to it we will see okay so first prompt is read a book by any asian author i'm literally reading elizabeth Lim's books right now and they are a chinese author the next prompt is read a book that feels timeless and they gave different types of options for this so spans across decades older book that is still relevant today a book you've read before and want to read again a new book that came out that you feel is going to be a classic a book that takes place in the past or future so i have had pachinko for months and it's been looking at me for a long time and you know what i still didn't pick it i still did not pick it i don't want to read that like i do eventually i feel like it's gonna be good but like it's 400 pages like i don't know i've been reading a lot of big books like i'm I, i'm really intimidated right now and the thing is i'm gonna keep reading big books but i i just it's not too many audiobooks that could save me for that prompt i'm actually gonna do the space between here and now by sarah Souk. Um, they are a Korean author. I first heard about this book from Tia Chu, like September, October, her wrap up. I don't really remember that much about it, honestly. When I read, when I heard her describing it, I was like, oh yeah. And I added it to my TBR a long time ago. I think this person, they're losing parts of their, themselves and like since bring them back to memories. Like it's like time travel type thing. I don't know. There is something with time. So that's fitting the prompt. Read an underrated book. Wasn't a bestseller, not a lot of people talk about lower ratings, rather not, um, author not super famous, hadn't heard about this book before. I did pick The Breakup List by Adib Karam. They are an Iranian author. I, this is queer. I don't know that much about it though. Um, I think, okay, I read the summary. I think the main character is queer and they're trying to hook up this, their crush and their sister together, but then, and they're like, oh, they gotta be straight, they gotta be straight. But then we find out that the love interest is not because this is a queer romance which i need to be reading more next i have read a debut book that's the fourth prompt i'm reading just another epic love poem by parisa akbari they're persian and iranian if i don't read that i think i might read daughter of the moon goddess i've been my coworker has been really pushing that and the sword of kagan on me she said they're amazing the last prompt is read a book with a story or character or world that represents what you would want in your next life i chose the do's and donuts of love by adiba hi Gird Girdar? they are bla they are bangladeshi i cannot say w's and b's today um i want donuts and love in my next life simple simple cindy was saying that if you want to make all of the authors ha um all the authors that you read different ethnicities so that was my goal this really put me on because she has a story graph it's collaborative where you can add different sources and books and there's so many there's so many so if you have a hard time and you want to participate there is that i will have that link below too um i did really want to read dragon fruit i believe that's Marquia. who was that by Makia lucier lucier i really wanted to read it but i'm on hold for like three months for that book on libby so i'm not reading that may um unforge but yeah if none of these work out i do have like six books to replace these do y'all want to know those i'm not gonna probably get to these so i don't want to tell y'all but i do because i'm interested in these books i've been like a lot of these have been on my tbr for a long time like a like for these arusha and the end of time by rashana chokshi rashani chokshi they are indian and filipino off with their heads by zoe hana makut they are korean this is a alice in wonderland retelling an ember in the ashes this is literally on my 24 out of 24 so i need to actually get into that yeah by sabati here they're pakistani a fa love story by lone lee they are vietnamese soulmates 
oh that's been on my list for a while by susan lee they're korean and then rent a boyfriend by gloria chow they're taiwanese there are a lot of books if i don't fit the prompts there are some other books that i want to read <laughs> um this is a library book open water by caleb azuma nelson all i know is this is a romance it's very poetic and it's short so this is something i've been seeing a lot of people like for a long time and i want to get into it boom a man called ove Uwe by Frederick Bachman. I've had this on my cart for a long time and I need to get to this. I know this is like about a grumpy old man. There's like a lot of humanity and compassion and love and, and cute shit. Like I, I love that. And there's a cat. He has a cat. So I'm into it. I'm into it. Then we've got Chain Gang All Stars by Nana Kwame Ajay Brinian. This is kind of like Hunger Games in like a prison industrial system. Like prisoners have to fight their way out, me thinks. Um, beautiful cover. I've heard really good things about this. I don't know. I'm intimidated by this book. It's sci-fi apparently. Oh, he's eating the girls up. My bitch pose is nasty. I also have Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is my first Tiffany D. Jackson book. It says, Corey Fields is dead. When Enchanted Jones wakes with blood on her hands and zero memory of the previous night, no one, the police and Corey's fans included, has more questions than she does. All she really knows is that this isn't how things are supposed to be. Corey was Enchanted's ticket to stardom. Ripped from the headlines mystery that exposes horrific secrets hiding behind the limelight and the power of a young woman's voice. I believe this has grooming and things like that. This is very ambitious. I don't know if I will get to any of these books. And now, finally, this is the end of the video. Thank y'all so much. Bye.